All right. Today we're going to take a look at the circulatory system, a.k.a. the cardiovascular system. Some fun facts about the circulatory system. If you were to lay out all of the arteries, capillaries, and veins in an adult, end to end, they would stretch about 96,560 kilometers, or 60,000 miles. Did you know that an adult human has an average resting heart rate of about 75 beats per minute? A couple more fun facts on the next page. Fun facts continued. Number three, the heart actually can still beat after being removed from the body as long as it's got a source of oxygen. Crazy. Unlike most other cells in the body, red blood cells do not have a nucleus. They have no nuclei. Number five, although veins may sometimes look blue through your skin, human blood is never blue. It's true. The reason it seems blue has more to do with our perception of color, the way that light scatters through the texture of our skin, and some other complicating factors which we can't go into here. We're going to need you to learn about the three main structures of the circulatory system. We have the heart, We've got all the blood vessels, and we've got the blood. On the next slides, we'll look at all the details about each of these three main structures of the circulatory system. First of all, let's talk about the heart. It is made of cardiac muscle. It never, ever gets tired. It is a pump to force blood through the body and it is the cause of your heartbeat. It's got four chambers and it's about the size of your fist. Before we move on to the next section to look at the blood vessels, let's look at how exactly your heart works. How does it pump the blood? It's a pretty amazing process. Let's take a look. First of all, if you're looking at your heart, the pumping mechanism is a cycle. Okay? The first thing you'll notice is that blood is returning to the heart from the body on this graphic as blue. All right? It's coming through the veins, one at the top, one at the bottom. That blood is coming into the right atrium. It then flows to the right ventricle, the right ventricle will pump and it will move the blood over and out of the heart to go to the lungs where it will pick up oxygen. Once it's been oxygenated, the blood will return to the heart from the lungs and it will return into the left atrium. Then it will move from the left atrium to the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the pump that pushes the blood out of the heart, out to the body, and it goes through the aortas and ultimately to the capillaries, which we'll learn about on the next slide. Now, a couple of things I have learned about how to remember the parts of the heart. I associate a vent, as in the term ventricle, with something that pulls air out of a room. So a vent pushes air out of a room. So for me, a ventricle vents the, the heart. And an atrium, if, if you think about a hotel that has a really nice entrance, a really nice lobby, that entrance is usually called an atrium. So it's a place where things come into another thing. So the atrium is where the blood is coming into the heart. Now let's talk about the blood vessels. There are three types. 
First of all, we have the arteries, like the aortic arteries that are heading out of the heart. These are the largest blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart. This is where you feel your pulse. Arteries, because they're under the most pressure, have the thickest walls of any of the blood vessels. Now the second kind of blood vessel we have, kind of in order of how they're um, used in our system, is the capillaries. These are the smallest blood vessels with the thinnest walls, um, as small as one cell thick. They connect the arteries and the veins, kind of like the turnaround point, which is where materials like oxygen and all the nutrients are exchanged between the body and the blood cells. The third type of blood vessel is, are the veins, and these are the guys that carry the blood back to the heart. They're smaller than arteries because they're not under as much pressure, um, and the, um, the veins have one-way valves in them to keep blood from flowing the, uh, back because they're under less pressure. Now let's take a little quiz here. Quick quiz number one. What type of blood vessel carries blood away from the heart? Question number two. What type of blood vessel has walls that are very thin and allow for materials to be exchanged between the body and the blood cells? Question number three, what type of blood vessel carries blood back to the heart? Now let's talk about the types of blood cells that there are. There are four types. First off, we have the white blood cells, which are responsible for fighting disease. You can see in this little GIF, how a white blood cell is actually chasing around a little bacteria, and that bacteria ultimately gets consumed by the white blood cell. That's how white blood cells work. Second type of blood cell, which uh, most of you are probably familiar with, is the red blood cells. These are the ones that carry oxygen to the body. Uh, they're shaped like slightly indented, flattened discs. The third type of cell we have is called plasma. This is a yellowish fluid. It's mostly water, about 90% water. Makes up about 55% of our blood. And the purpose of plasma is to carry waste where it can be taken out of the body and also to carry nutrients and other substances to where they're needed. The last type of cell we have in our blood are called platelets. Platelets are little tiny oval-shaped cells that are made in the bone marrow, and they help form clots to stop bleeding. If uh, you've heard of hemophilia, hemophilia is a disease um, where people don't have platelets in their blood, and so if they get a very, very tiny cut, they never stop bleeding. They can bleed out and die from a really, really tiny cut because they don't have these little platelets which are gathering at the site of a, of a blood vessel being broken and kind of plugging the hole. Now, any discussion of the circulatory system has to include the kidneys, not because they're part of the circulatory system, because they're not, but because they interact with the circulatory system and it's their job to filter the waste products from the blood and they make our pee, they make urine, they're responsible for filtering the blood and allowing us to get rid of the things we do not need anymore, our waste products. Now let's do another little quiz, quick quiz number two. Let's talk about blood cells again. What type of blood cell carries waste to where it can be taken out of the body and also carries nutrients and other substances to where they're needed? Question number three. 
Question number two, what kind of blood cell fights disease? Question number three, what kind of blood cell forms clots to stop bleeding? The last question on quiz number two, what type of blood cell carries oxygen to the body cells? So we have talked about the structures of the circulatory system. Now let's talk about the functions. What does it do? So first of all, the circulatory system pumps the blood through the body. That's its primary function is to move the blood. The second function is it picks up oxygen from the lungs and nutrients from the digestive system and it carries them all throughout the body. It also picks up waste products when it's moving throughout the body and it carries the waste products to where they can be eliminated depending on the type of waste product it is. Now, the big word homeostasis. I've warned you that every single body system we study has homeostasis factors that we have to be aware of, so the circulatory system is no different. The first thing that the circulatory system does is it takes oxygen and nutrients to your body's cells. It also carries waste products to where they can be eliminated. It helps to fight disease in the white blood cells and injury by carrying things that will heal you. Platelets help you if you've got a blood blood uh, vessel has been cut or something like that. And when your body's cells need more oxygen, the heart will beat faster to deliver more oxygen where your body needs it. Okay, another quiz here. Quick quiz number three. What's the pathway for blood throughout the body? Second question, what part of the circulatory system is made of cardiac muscle, works continuously, never gets tired? Third quiz number three question, what part of the circulatory system is made up of plasma, platelets, red and white cells? Every body system has stimulus response that it takes care of. The circulatory system responds to internal stimuli quite a bit. The first way is that the heart rate will adjust to the body's oxygen needs. The second way is that blood vessels will widen to allow more blood to reach areas that need more oxygen so they can react to release energy or the blood vessels are going to widen to allow more white blood cells to fight disease in an infected area. Last quiz on the circulatory system. What kind of stimuli is the circulatory system responding to in the following situations? Number one, the blood vessels widening when you're body temperature rises? Is it internal or external stimuli? Question number two on quiz number four. What kind of stimuli is the circulatory system responding to when your blood vessels widen because you hurt your ankle? Last question. What kind of stimuli is the circulatory system responding to if your heart starts beating faster when you're running? Is it internal or external stimuli?